This is a quick video to show you how to use Google Sheets so you can format your sheet for your vacation project. The first thing you're going to have to do is make sure you gather all the information. So in your project research document, you want to make sure you have your itinerary. I've started an itinerary here. Imagine yours is totally full. And I have the items that I want to, that I'm going to do on any individual day. Um, I'd fill out all of these days for seven days. Remember, that is one of your requirements. We want to do seven days. Once you're done that, you'll be able to start a Google Sheet. Now, a Google Sheet, to start a new one, you're just going to go over and click New, and you can click on Google Sheets, and it will, uh, it will show up. So once you have your Google Sheet, I've started to fill in this sheet. Uh, just to... Hi, everybody. This is a quick video to show you how to use Google Drive, Google Sheets, and your Google Docs in order to create your vacation project. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need your project research page. Your project research page is created in Google Docs, and we've gone over this a bit in class, but your project research page, if I open this up, is basically your itinerary with the date and any key events that are going to happen on any given day. These don't have to be spelled out in detail. You just want the general overview of what you plan on doing. So you can see here on December 17th, I plan on having lunch at McDonald's, flying to Calgary, check in the hotel, supper at Calgary Tower, and so on and so forth. Uh, and we're going to lay this out by every single day. We don't need great detail. Again, just the key events that we're going to have to make sure that we have those in our Google Sheets. The second thing we need to have is our spreadsheet. So this is a Google Sheet. If you're not sure how to start a Google Sheet, you simply go up to the left, upper left-hand corner, click on New, and you'll see Google Sheets. Select it, and you'll have a Google Sheet in order to put everything in. So for my Google Sheet, if I call it up, if I double-click on it, my Google Sheet looks like this. So I've started to fill out this Google Sheet. You'll notice I've included category. So the different things I'm going to do. These are come right off of your project overview page. So transportation, hotel costs, etc. I've organized mine by date. So I have all my transportation by the day it's going to happen. Where do I get those from? Again, I go back to my itinerary and I can double check that I have everything from my itinerary into my Google Sheet. Now, if you haven't used a spreadsheet before, one of the ways to talk about any place in a spreadsheet is by its row and column. So if I look at my uh, first cell here, they're called individual cells, I am in column A, row 1. So column A, row 1. If I move this over a little bit, you can see column A, row 1. If I'm in column B, row 1, and if I went to column C, row 6, I can see that that is my total airfare with what I have here. Plan out your spreadsheet a bit in advance. It will help you. I'll put a copy of this spreadsheet on in case you want to have a look on the post as well. So, moving over just a little bit. If we have a look at our spreadsheet, I've done categories, dates, subcategories, the cost. What's it actually going to cost me? I'm going to have to pay some tax. How much is the tax? What's the total cost per person? How much is that going to cost? What's the total group cost? And then I've also left a little space over here on the right to add any notes. Those are things that I want to tell my teacher or I want to know. So let's start out by figuring out our sales tax. In order to do the sales tax, our first step is going to be to actually understand what the tax is. So a quick search on Google, as you can see here, shows the tax for British Columbia. The provincial tax rate is 7%. We also have a federal tax rate, which is 5%. So my tax in BC is going to be 7 plus 5 is 12%. So to calculate the tax, I'm going to want to take this number in cell D4, and I'm going to want to figure out 12% of it. So to figure out 12%, I simply type in an equal sign, which means let's find out what that equals. So the tax is the same as taking whatever number is in this cell, and we're going to multiply that number, which is shift and then 8, which gives us a little star, times 12%, and 12% is 0 0.12. I click Enter, 
and see the number up here, the 30.48, that's going to show up in our cell. And that is the tax on $254. So $30.48. Now, I would also have to type in the same formula here. Luckily, with a spreadsheet, if we grab this little handle here, it will actually, we can pull it down to the next one, and it will copy that formatting. So in this cell, we have D4 times 12%. In this cell, we have D5 times 12%. And if I were to pull it down here, we would get D6 times 12%. However, for this one, what I want to do is I want to go, this cell is equal to the two taxes added together, or the sum, and we select sum of this and this, those two cells, E4 and E5 and it comes up in a bracket, we close the bracket, hit enter, and now it's totaling that up for us. So the total cost per person then, if we want to work that out, that's going to equal, hopefully you have this, D4, and I want to add that number to E4. I click enter, and I get $248. And I'm going to pull that down and it's going to work out the total cost going, the total cost coming back, a little cheaper coming back, and then my total airfare per person is $567. Now, I don't like all the space I have here for, for the date and time, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on this row, or this column, and I'm going to move it over a little bit, because I don't need that much space. And but I want to be able to see it so I can change all of this really quickly. Big advantage with spreadsheets is how fast you can change things. Now, if I want to figure out the total group cost, there are seven people on our trip mom and dad, and and uh, and me, and four of my friends. So my total cost is going to equal whatever this number is, and there's seven of us, so I need to multiply by seven. I click enter and I have the total group cost for going, the total group cost for coming back, and then I can have the total group cost for both. So the total cost for traveling is $3,974.88. Now, let's pretend that something else was going to happen. If you're going to a different country, one of the things you're going to have to do is include exchange rates. So you may have to include a, a column with exchange rates. So we can click up here, and we can go insert one left, and we can put exchange. We, quick, we quickly put the exchange rate for whatever it's going to be. So let's say that our exchange rate in this case is going, is going to be, oh, I didn't want the exchange rate there, didn't I? Oh, that's problematic. If I was on paper, I'd have to go back and do it all again, but I'm not on paper. What I want to do is I want to take the exchange rate and figure out what the cost per person is going to be with the exchange rate. So let's take this cell, this whole column, and let's just move it over. Again, another powerful tool with spreadsheets. And I'm going to move this over so you can see how the cost change. Now, with my exchange, my exchange is going to be this whole total cost, so 100% of the total cost. And let's say the exchange rate is 22%. So it's going to be 100% plus 22%. It's going to be 122%. So I'm going to say the this cost is equal to this amount times 122% is 1.22. And if I hit enter, it's now worked out the total cost for this airfare going is $347 with the exchange. Okay. Again, we can always go back and see what the cell is. So my exchange rate here in what I've done is, I'm going to put it right up here so I can remember, an exchange rate of 22 and it's percent. Enter. So I have a 22% exchange rate, $347. And that's going to apply to everything, so I'm going to do this. Now, this number hasn't changed as I've changed that number because I want to know how much the whole group's going to be. So if we go back to this cell, we have to be careful to change it. 
we don't want it to be F4, we want it to be G4. So we're going to go back into this, change the formula slightly. It's now changed the total cost, and we can drag it down. Oops. We can drag the whole thing down, and it changes all the costs. So changing numbers in Excel is really simple. Once again, we can do the same thing here. We can say, what is the tax? The tax is going to be, well, every time we're going to take the tax, it's going to be the same. Um, we're going to take this tax, and the tax is going to be times 12%. If we're, if we're still in BC, but we've now gone to Alberta, so we have to pay a different tax rate. So let's look at the Alberta tax rate. The Alberta tax rate is only GST, which is 5%. So now I can go in and I can say it equals this number times 5% is 0 0.05. And it gives me a number. Now, is that reasonable? $16.40. So for every $100, I'd pay $5. I have $300. 300, 300 would be three fives. Three fives are 15. That makes sense. So I think we're doing okay. Looks like it's calculated it right. It's always important to double check and make sure it's calculating it correctly. I can drag this down and once again, it'll figure out my cost. If I want to figure out the total cost per person, I simply go equals. Once again, I can do the sum, or I can just add them together, the sum of these two together. I can close my brackets, hit enter, and it works it all out for me. Pretty neat. Drag it down, works it all out. Now, in this case, let's pretend there is no exchange rate. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. There is no exchange rate in Alberta. So, um... We're not going to put anything in here. We're going to leave this one blank. And now if we need to figure out the cost, we go equals this number multiplied by, I'm oh, sorry, this number times seven people. And that gives us our cost per hotel per night. Okay. Now we can take this and we can drag it down. Now let's ask ourselves is that if, if this is reasonable. So the hotel is $328 per night, and I put a note over here. I'm just going to sc scroll over. I put a note over here that says it's the cost for the group for two rooms. So $328 is the cost for the whole group per room. Does that make sense that it's going to cost me $2,410? Well, hopefully you're saying no. So we need to think about this a little bit differently. When we were doing our airfare, we were mult we were looking at the cost per person was what this row was. In this case, we're taking three hundred and twenty eight dollars, adding the tax, but we're not paying that per person. This is the cost for the entire group. So instead, the cost per person is not three hundred forty four dollars and forty cents. I have to divide this by seven. So. We put a slash mark in, right beside the shift key, divide by 7, and now I get a cost of $49.20 per person. That seems more realistic. And we can go down and we can change it. So the key thing I want you to get out of this is that it's really easy to change things with spreadsheets. Likewise, I can save my total hotel cost. If I have to figure out for everybody, it's going to equal the sum. And then I just drag, and it works it all out. It is so much easier using a spreadsheet, so you don't have to spend a lot of time doing the calculations, but you really need to think when you're working out these individual numbers. Okay, the last example I wanted to show you is something like McDonald's in Victoria. So McDonald's, if we were going to stop at McDonald's on the road to the airport, we need to do the same thing. I've actually chosen for McDonald's, because I can't know what everyone's going to eat, I've actually just said in my notes, based on the average meal cost. So I'm saying the average meal cost for McDonald's is $9. Some people will spend more, some people will spend less. And then I'm just going to go through and I'm going to finish working that out all the way through. So equals and continue on just like you have with the rest of the spreadsheet. So 
the important thing with spreadsheets is to make sure that you're organized in how you put things.